In this video, I'm going to install Ubuntu 2004 on a UFI Hyper-V virtual machine on a Windows 11 Pro host PC. So the first thing I need to do is right click the start button and launch the Windows terminal as an admin. And then I need to type in the following line, which I'll leave in the video description to enable the optional feature Hyper-V. And Hyper-V is an optional feature that requires Windows 11 Pro or Windows 11 Education. So once it's downloaded Hyper-V, you'll need to press Y to reboot your computer and it will go ahead and install the Hyper-V feature. Okay, so now that Hyper-V is installed, I'm going to download a Ubuntu 20.04 ISO. So, we need to download Ubuntu 2004 with update one or higher because this ISO supports uh, UFI bias with secure boot with uh, updated Grub2 bootloader for the Grub2 security exploit, which was discovered in mid 2020. The original Ubuntu 2004 ISO is not updated for this Grub2 security exploit and will be blocked by secure boot. Okay, so now we're going to go to the start menu and we're going to select Windows Tools and here we should see Hyper-V Manager. So we're going to right click the name of our computer and then select New Virtual Machine and then we're going to select Next and then we're going to name the virtual machine Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Next, we're going to set the generation to be generation two. And generation two will create a virtual machine that has a UFI bias with secure bit. Next, we're going to increase the memory. So this is going to depend on the capabilities of your host PC. So I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, so it's safe to give the virtual machine four gigabytes. You should configure your RAM so your Windows 10 host PC has at least four to eight gigabytes spare for itself. Next, I'm going to change the connection to default switch, which will give the capability of connecting to the internet for installing Ubuntu 2004 updates. I will use the default options to create a virtual hard disk. And I'm going to select the Ubuntu 2004 ISO that I downloaded. And then I'm going to select next and then finish. So this should create the Ubuntu 2004 virtual machine. However, we're going to need to configure some additional hardware settings. So under security, we want to change the secure boot template from Microsoft Windows, which will only boot a Windows operating system to Microsoft UFI certificate authority. And this will allow us to install Ubuntu 2004 using secure boot with a machine owner key. If I go to the processor settings, I see by default that the virtual machine is only configured to use one virtual processor. Now, if I open the task manager and go to CPU, I see that my processor, my physical processor has four cores. So I'm going to assign two of these to the virtual machine. Under integration services, I'm going to check guest services. And then I'm going to leave all the other options at their default. So we need to now right click the virtual machine and select connect. If you just select start here, it will actually start the virtual machine and it won't display anything. It will just run it in the background. So once we've connected, then we need to start the virtual machine. And as the Ubuntu 2004 ISO is loaded, it's going to automatically boot to it. And this will start the Ubuntu 2004 live environment. So it will first carry out 
the file integrity checks of the ISO to make sure that it's it's not corrupted. And once these pass, you'll be given the option to either try or install Ubuntu 2004. So I'm going to select the English language and then install Ubuntu. And I'm going to change the keyboard layout to the United Kingdom. As we're already connected to the internet, download updates while installing Ubuntu will automatically be checked. I'm also going to check install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, as well as the additional media formats, which will mean the multimedia codecs will work. So in order to do this, we need to configure secure boot. And what we do is create a machine owner key here that will supply to the VM's virtual UFI bias in order to allow the virtual machine to pass secure boot with these multimedia codecs. So input your machine owner key and confirm it and we'll later supply this to the UFI bias. In the next screen, I'm going to select Erase Disk and install Ubuntu, and then I'm going to need to select Continue to confirm that I'm going to make changes to the virtual disk. After this, we'll be asked for our location, so I'm going to select the United Kingdom, and then we're going to be prompted to set up the user account. So your name should be your full name and your username should be all lowercase with no special characters. Your computer name will be automatically generated from your username and your computer model, which is just the virtual machine. Once you've created your username, you'll need to create a password and confirm the password. So this is different from your machine owner key because this is your actual user password that you're going to use every time you log on to the virtual machine. And your machine owner key, you're only going to use once to configure secure boot during the first boot of the virtual machine. So the installation is more or less automated and you'll be prompted to restart the virtual machine when the installation has completed. So I'm going to select restart now and then the virtual machine is going to restart. Now this is going to be the first time boot. So it's going to take us to the machine owner key management. So what we want to do is select in role machine owner key and then continue and then yes. And then we're going to need to type in the machine owner key we created during the Ubuntu setup. Now you'll not see any characters on the screen to indicate that you've typed something. So just type in your machine owner key and then press enter. Once it's accepted, select reboot and you've been to 2004 should now be configured for secure boot. You shouldn't be asked for this machine owner key again. You've been to 2004 should boot with all the multimedia codecs and additional drivers. Okay, so now log into the virtual machine using the password that you created and you'll be greeted with the final stages of the setup. So I'm going to select skip and then next through most of these screens. Now, if you're going to use maps or something, you may want to enable the location services. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the start screen and I'm going to launch the software updater. So it's going to check for updates and it's going to find updates. So I'm going to select install now and I'm going to get this authentication required screen. So this is the Linux equivalent of the user account control prompt. And in order to proceed, I'm going to need to input my password and then select authenticate. So it will now go ahead and download the updates and then it'll go ahead and install the updates. So once the updates have been downloaded and installed, we'll be prompted for a reboot. 
So Hyper-V is a bit behind VMware when it comes to window snapping and resizing. So if I log on to the virtual machine and I right click the desktop, I can change the display settings. And I can also do this on my host PC. So I see the display settings are 1024 times 768, whereas the host PC is 1920 times 1080. And notice when I try and snap it, nothing happens. And when I highlight the maximize button, then I don't get any of the Windows 11 snap layouts. So when I maximize it, I see that the virtual machine stays the same size. So in order to change this, I'm going to open the terminal and type in the following command line. So it's beginning with sudo, which is an instruction to run as a super user, i.e. an abbreviation for super user do and then nano, so this is going to open the nano text editor and then the location of the file. Once again, this will be in the video description. So we're going to want to use the arrow keys to get to the end of quiet splash. And we're going to want to add video equals hyper V underscore FB colon 1920 X1080 and you can swap the resolution to the resolution shown in your system display within your Windows 11 host PC. So in order to exit, we need to press Ctrl and X, and then we need to press Y to save and then enter to overwrite the file using its existing file name. So now we want to update the grub, which is essentially the Linux bootloader and then we want to reboot. So the virtual machine will now reboot and it's going to be the full size of your, your screen resolution or whatever you configured it to be. So when we maximize, it's going to take up the full screen and now we can use Ubuntu 2004 quite happily as a virtual machine in Hyper-V.